this evening to have the Don Lugo High School Color Guard. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's give them a big round of applause. Don Lugo High School ROTC, Color Guard. Have a seat, folks. We have some ceremonials this evening. We'll start off with National Mental Health Awareness Month, May of 2016. I would like to call up Michelle Cheng, Clinical Specialist, City of Chino. Jenny Mott, Chino Valley Education Coordinator with the National Alliance of Mental Illness and Nurse with the Chino Valley Unified School District. That's a long title. They pay you extra for all those? No, I don't think so. <laughs> we have a proclamation, and it reads, Whereas, on behalf of the citizens of Chino, we recognize the month of May 2016 as National Mental Health Awareness Month. Whereas, the city of Chino, Chino Valley Unified School District, and Healthy Chino Coalition recognize that mental health issues can affect all people. And whereas, serious mental illnesses are more common than cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. And according to the uh, World Health Organization, one in four people develop some kind of mental illness at some point in their lives. And whereas misunderstandings exist about many mental illnesses in our social culture often wrongly imposes stigma on these conditions. And whereas the city of Chino recognizes the importance of addressing both mental and physical health concerns as being essential to everyone's overall health and well-being. And whereas the city of Chino offers mental health services to youth, adults, and families. And whereas the city of Chino partners with the National Alliance for Mental Illness, Chino Valley, uh, to provide free support groups to educate, inspire hope, and de uh, decrease the stigma surrounding the mental health issues. And whereas the City of Chino, in partnership with the Chino Valley Unified School District and the City of Chino Hills, offers several intervention and prevention programs for the youth in our community to better equip them to face life's challenges. Now, therefore, I identify Mayor of the City of Chino to hereby proclaim May 16, 2016, as National Mental Health Awareness Month. Would like to offer you this certificate. <laughs> Where's the microphone? <laughs> where, are you, where are you working tomorrow? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there it is. I can say a few words. <laughs> I might have to just. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Yates and members of the City Council once again for your continued support of community services. Um, at the City of Chino, we have so many unique services and one of them is all the services that we have at Human Services. Um, we do provide counseling at all of our schools at Chino Valley, which includes South Ontario, Chino Hills, and all of the Chino Hills schools. Um, and um, I do ask that if, you've, if you know anyone who needs some help, even if it's just to talk to someone, um, someone who's going undergoing something major in their life, um, to please give us a call and see if we can help them. And if not, we can give them referrals as needed. Um, our number is 909-334-3259. And tonight we have Jenny Mott, who is the NAMI Chino Valley Education Coordinator. And she is one of our partners. Um, and here. Thank you. Um, I also want to thank the uh, City Council and um, the community at large for all of the support um, of Chino Valley NAMI. We do um, continue to have our family support group uh, across the street at uh, Carol Owens Center twice each month. We have our family to family education class that's 12, week long, 12 weeks long that we'll be doing in the fall again. We have our peer to peer support group and educational class that's on hiatus right now. Our peers are kind of undergoing some rough times right now and um, with Chino Valley NAMI we're all uh, volunteers so we want to make sure that we always keep our mental health good so right now some of them are struggling a little bit so we're getting that hopefully back together soon with um, the school district we have a couple classes one is for our students called ending the silence and we go in and work with them um, teaching them about mental health mental wellness about um, warning signs of mental illness of suicide and giving them resources and where to go if they do have some 
mental health issues. Um, we have one for teachers and staff and administrators called Parents and Teachers as Allies that helps them understand what the students and the families are undergoing when they go through crisis. That's really important because a good teacher or a bad teacher can really make the difference on how these students do and if they can continue in school. Um, for the community, we have one called In Our Own Voice, which takes um, a, a family member and a, a peer who actually give their own lived experience so that people can understand what people are going through. We also have uh, the program that Kathy Ellis, our president, uh, put together, and she goes in once a month to our Chino Institute for Men and works with the men who have a diagnosed mental illness and helps them learn about their mental illness, how to stay well, how to work with others, how to have relationships, so hopefully they can get out and have a better life and not be incarcerated the next time. I also want to thank our police department because I know you guys work really hard. Um, my son is a policeman, so I definitely have a, mm -hmm. a lot of, um, you know, appreciation of how hard you guys work. And, you know, your job is really tough as it is under the best of circumstances. And when you have to work with somebody that's mentally ill, it's really scary. So I know you've done some really great collaborations with um, the mental health department to, in to make sure that you guys know how to handle those um, <coughs> difficult situations. So in closing, I want to say with community support that's very important in mental health, what we want to do is take the I out of mental illness and replace it with we so we have mental wellness. Well, very good. Um, I think the most difficult thing uh, about spotting a friend or uh, your own kids or your wife or whoever it is is to pick up on these bad bad vibes they're generating, and then after something tragic happens, then you go, I saw that, but it didn't register with me. I think that's the most difficult part, is trying to identify when somebody's having a, a personal mental problem. And usually the people closest to them don't pick up on it, which is sad. So the educating people in that uh, part is very, very critical. We appreciate the hard work you uh, guys do, and keep it up. Have a round of applause for them. <laughs> Uh, I love it. Uh, Wildfire Awareness Week, uh, May 1st through the 7th, 2016. And I'd like to call, call up our very own uh, Fire Chief Shackelford. Okay, Chief. Here we go. Whereas the, the freeway complex fire on November 15th and 16th of 2008 burned 13,304 acres of uh, vegetation in Chino Hills State Park, residential and open space areas throughout Chino Hills, and caused the evacuation of over 400 residents. I remember that, and I remember how it stopped. Uh, whereas uh, predictions of, of below normal precipitation, uh, coupled with higher than normal uh, temperatures, may lead to dry conditions similar to those exhibited in 2008. And whereas the combined impacts of drought and adverse forest conditions across California creates dangerous wildfire, uh, wildfire conditions that can threaten the lives and property of residents of the Chino Valley, as well as endanger our delicate ecosystem. And whereas extreme weather conditions caused by Santa Ana winds are known to increase these dangerous conditions. And whereas the key to understanding dangers of wildlife uh, is thorough education and awareness and past experiences have demonstrated that a well-informed and prepared public can take actions to prevent fires from starting. And whereas, whereas Wildfire Awareness Week will promote the awareness and education of necessary action and strategies to prevent wildfires and the loss of life, property, and environmental damage associ associated. And whereas the Chino Valley Fire District, along with the government agencies and the Carbon Canyon Fire Safe Council, are prepared to assist our citizens by making our community safer from hazards of wildfire through programs such as providing a brush drop-off and green waste dumpster to Carbon Canyon residents and declaring May 15, 2016 as the deadline for removal of all hazardous brush from the Chino Valley. Now, therefore, I, Dennis Shates, Mayor of the City of Chino, uh, do hereby pro proclaim May 1st through the 7th as Wildlife Awareness Week. So we'd like to present that to you, Chief. <laughs> well, Mayor Yates and Council, thank you for taking the time to bring the public uh, focus and awareness to the issue. I'd just like to encourage members of the 
uh, local community that are here tonight or at home watching on TV to please clear your property before May 15th. If you have questions, please contact the fire district. You can go to our website, chinavalleyfire.org, or call us by telephone, 909-902-5280. And uh, at the prompt, select community risk reduction. They can help you with that process. The deadline is May 15th for clearance. Um, I know most of you in the room or watching tonight don't feel that you live in a wildfire uh, susceptible area. You do. Um, it, it, all it takes is some veg vegetation or weeds uh, for the fire to spread. A year ago, uh, last in, in 2015 in May, we actually had a grass fire that started in the, the uh, west side of Chino on the north end and spread to some palm trees that had dead palm fronds. Uh, we had a structure fire that occurred a mile away uh, that was determined to be caused by a burning palm frond that was carried by the wind. So please wow. clear any dead vegetation. If you have questions, we'll be happy to provide assistance. And thank you again. Well, uh, get back to that 2008 fire. Wasn't that the one when it rushed down to the housing? But luckily, they had planted the, uh, the ice plants, and it just stopped them dead cold and saved that whole housing so thing. That was a very long day. It was, uh, yeah. For me. And for that evening, I actually flew uh, to go assess the fire uh -huh. in a helicopter. We had 10 miles of fire front approaching Chino Hills all at the same time, and it hit multiple yeah. inhabited areas. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, we had lots of help from neighboring fire departments. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the wind shifted in time, and we were very fortunate we didn't lose a single But the news had aerials of that, where it just came right after the ice plant and just stopped it dead. It was really, uh, really something to see, something to learn from, too. The winds uh, were very favorable for us at that yeah. point in yeah. the fire, but so fortunate for a lot of folks. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Thank you Thanks, again. Chief. Appreciate Thank it. You. Folks. <laughs> Next uh, ceremonial proclamation is National Public Works Week. I'd like to call up our Assistant City Manager and Director of Public Works, Mr. Jose Allaire. Well, I'm earning my keep tonight, aren't I? Proclamation reads, whereas public work services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support of understanding informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public work systems and programs, such as water, sewers, streets, and highways, public buildings, and solid waste collection. You get all the good job. Oh, I did all the good <laughs> and whereas the health and safety and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services, and whereas the quality of effectiveness of these facilities as well as their planning, design, and construction is vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works officials. And whereas the efficiency of qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of work they perform. Now, therefore, I identify Mayor of the City of Chino do hereby proclaim the week of May 15th uh, to the 21st as, as National Public Works Week. Would you like to present that to your department? Okay, you got to repeat that rhyme. You guys say, "What is it?" Oh yeah, you always. Uh, I always ask you. You always that. like that every uh -huh. year. What is it? If it goes, grows, or flows, we're working on it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Public works. Oorah. Yeah, we're our hands are in everything. But uh, mayor, council, uh, you know, first of all, I'm very proud to be working at this great city um, and our public works employees. Uh, we really do have a great group there, and uh, they really appreciate all the support you've given us over the years. As the proclamation says, and you uh, reiterated, Mayor, um, you know, we work on our parks, our sewer, storm drain, water systems. Uh, we help development get through and help us grow and process uh, all the improvements they need to get done uh, to support our new residents coming into the city. Um, our capital improvement projects, Public Works is uh, the lead on those, and we couldn't do any of that without your support. You give us the resources and the tools we need. And the need, taxpayers give us the money to do it. And Ooh, the wrong. taxpayers <laughs> give us the money to do it. You're absolutely <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when I meet with the Public Works Department, um, I do want to share with you that they have uh, really do appreciate uh, everything you do for us. It allows us to provide the services to our great residents here. And we're very proud and happy that you've recognized us with this proclamation. So we do appreciate uh, all of your support, everything well, we, you do we, for we us. We really appreciate the Public Works Department because they make the whole city look great. And uh, we've gotten a lot of awards because of it uh, and their hard work. So we pass our congratulations on to them. I will pass that on to them. Thank you. Thank you Let's very have a much. Round of applause, Public Works. <laughs> Next is the home, Mayor's Home Beautification Award for May of 2016. And the winner is... 
Janet Fleming. Where's Janet? She's here. There she is. Congratulations, Thank Janet. You. This is Why do I have two? Oh. Oh, I see. We have a certificate that reads, oh, uh, thank you for the continued improvement and maintenance of your home, resulting in a substantial contribution to the overall appearance of our community. Thank so you. you're responsible for that. We'd like yeah, to present that. Then we have one from the county supervisor, Kurt Hagman, that reads, in honor of receiving the Mayor's Home Beautification Award for the month of May from our uh, supervisor. Sure. And here is a picture of your beautiful home. As we can see, they usually showed up on the. I guess they yeah. didn't this time. And we have more goodies. Oh, goodness. Here's an official lapel pin. Oh. Oh, a pin. And the coup de car here. Oh. We'd like you to put this in your yard. Oh, you better believe it. And, uh, <laughs> oh, you better. Uh, and what happens at the next mayor's state of the city next year, uh -huh. uh, the council picks all 12 winners for the year, and we'll pick one to be the grand winner. And uh, we'll have you to the luncheon and give you a little, uh, little present along with it oh, if you win. Nice. So, uh, nice. who does all your yard work and stuff? I do. You do. I do. Cool. I would rather pick a weed than vacuum a floor <laughs> any day. <laughs> Done Bomb it girl, to huh? death. Done it to death. Um, yes. Uh, after I retired, I volunteered for real. Where'd you retire from? Uh, CIM. Oh. Yes. And then I started volunteering Habitat for Humanity. Oh, cool. I was on the grand jury three times. Wow. And uh, an animal shelter. And then I looked at my <coughs> front yard and I thought, somebody better volunteer there to do are. something. <laughs> uh, so that was me, and that's what I do. Well, you've done a great job. Oh, well, you have a beautiful you. home, and congratulations. Well, thank you. Good job. I would stay, but my license says I have to be home by dark. Oh, oh I. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm old. Uh, but me too. I understand <laughs> I I exactly where you're coming from. <laughs> Thank Congratulations. You very nice Congratulations. Good job. Okay. Uh, next, we, next we have uh, the invocation to be provided by Rod Burns uh, today to his request. And anybody liking to protest, would you please rise for the invocation? Uh, will you please bow with me? Heavenly Father, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you this evening, and Lord, your word says that you raise up governments, and Lord, we know that you've raised up this mayor and these council members to do your business. We just pray that you would have your hand upon them this evening, that you would give them wisdom, that they might govern for the benefit of the people of this community, and we thank you for that. We pray that you would be with our police and fire as they continually, Lord, um, put their lives on the line. Uh, for our benefit. And so we pray that you'd have your hand upon them, keep them safe in all that they do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rob. Have a seat, folks. Uh, next is public communications. Uh, this is the time to address the council on items that do not appear on the agenda. Uh, you are reminded that you have five minutes for your presentation. I have one written request to speak, and that is uh, Mr. Jason Zara. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. My name is Jason Zara. I am the new Executive Director of the Chino Valley Chamber of Commerce. Oh. So I wanted to come out tonight to introduce myself. I hope to be a regular fixture at your meetings, and with your permission, I will periodically be coming up here to let you know what's going on with the Chamber. Good. Hopefully, we'll continue to work closely with the city and with the residents and the businesses. I'm now on day two in my new job, so <laughs> I've uh, 16 hours in, it's been a wonderful experience. It's been a very warm welcome. I've got about a thousand more people that I need to meet and a lot of faces and names to put together. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have for now, but otherwise I just wanted to say hello and I look forward to working with you all in coming weeks. Well, where'd you come from, Jason? Uh, most recently I came, from, I came from Imperial Valley. Oh. I was most recently working for the Brawley Chamber of Commerce down there. Oh. 
and uh, moves up here so. is a little cooler. Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> right now, especially, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're ha it's a pleasure to have you aboard in our fine city, and I know you do a great job for great. us. Great. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Jason. Thank you. That's all the written requests I have to speak. Anybody else in the audience have anything to address on the consent calendar? You can step up, sir, and uh, give us your name for the record, and you're reminded you have five minutes. Thank you. My name's Bob Levine. Uh, we did fill out a form, but I don't know where it's at. <laughs> Turn it in. Okay. Anyway, uh, oh. I'm with the Vietnam Wall for Chino. That's be coming pretty soon. I'm here tonight, tonight <coughs> to extend invitation to all the, the mayor, the council members, the public. Uh, the wall will be there at Yellow Park June the 30th through July the 5th. Uh, many volunteers have de devoted many hours of work in planning to bring the Vietnam Wall to this area, to the city. We have several activities planned. Opening ceremonies will be July 1st at 10 a.m. I hope to see everybody there in attendance. It's free. Uh, to honor our veterans that are on the wall that sacrifice your country so we can have the freedom that we have. Uh, on June the 30th, the day before, uh, we will, the Vietnam Wall will be arriving and we're going to have a procession out of uh, police station. And at that time, I would like to introduce Warner Stafford. He's our other uh, person in charge of uh, the, procession. the procession. Okay. Just Thank a little you. bit of information. The wall is going to a yellow park. Yes, no. a yellow yeah. park. <laughs> okay. uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Warner Stafford. I am in charge of bringing in the Vietnam Wall procession for June 30th uh, when it arrives in uh, Chino. At 10 a.m. that Thursday, we will start the procession from the Chino Police Department to a yellow park. Uh, we would like to have the accompaniment of that with the city council, along with the fallen families present at the procession and at that ceremony, that private ceremony, if possible, along with the public that could be uh, viewing what will be going on. Uh, this is somewhat special since uh, the majority of you know this will be 50 years since the Vietnam Wall. And a lot of us were children, and some of us were not even thought of at that time. So uh, it's a momental thing that we think that we'll, we will be bringing here. And um, after that ceremony and the next day, the opening ceremony will be conducted by Bob Levine. So I hope all of you will be able to join us I'm going to leave some business cards here so you will be able to contact me to let me know if you will be available to be in the procession. I know that you are. I know that you are. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for the information. It's going to be a great day in the city of Chino with the Vietnam Wall there. And uh, we're having our fireworks, annual fireworks show down there. So it's going to be a great few days uh, with all this being going on one uh, small frame time frame. Uh, anybody else have anything to, uh, yes ma'am, state your name for the record please. Good evening, my name is Brenda Strong and I'm co-chairman of the uh, committee for the uh, Liberty Courtyard and I'm inviting you all to come to our fundraiser on the 20th of May at the community building for pasta dinner. We'll have a little dancing. We will have a bar, beer and wine. You have to pay for it. And uh, we still have tickets. <laughs> yes, you can do that. Um, and there are, uh, we're still going to be selling bricks uh, up and through uh, 4th of July. Even though the last flyer <coughs> says June 30th on it, we have extended it through 4th of July. So I hope to see you all there. I have tickets if anybody needs any. Thanks. How much are the tickets? 20. 20. Ooh. Plus raffle prices. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. Anybody else? <coughs> Seeing that, we'll close public communication. Next is the consent calendar. Uh, we have a th one, two, three meetings that we have to uh, deal with here. The absences of some of the council members. The minutes for the meeting of April 19th and 20th, uh, Councilman Howie was absent. And so I would uh, request that the, uh, those two dates be uh, motioned. So moved. 
for approval. No, I don't do that anymore. No. Okay, it's moved by Councilman Duncan, second by Mayor Pro Tem Yaloa. Please vote. It passes uh, four yes with one abstention. The next is the minutes of the special meeting of April 6th where Mayor Pro Tem Yaloa was absent. I would entertain a uh, motion. It's a motion by Councilman Duncan, seconded by Councilman Tom Howie. Still waiting on you, Earl. Nope. There it goes. That's approved four yes with one abstention, that being Mayor Pro Tem um, Now the rest of the, the, the then the balance of the consent calendar. I would entertain a motion. It's uh, moved by uh, Councilman Duncan, seconded by Councilman Elrod. Please vote. Approves a five yes, that's the majority. Uh, next is public hearings. Uh, prior to the vote of the City Council, any member of the audience will have the opportunity to address the Council on items listed under public hearings. You're reminded you have five minutes for your presentation. Item seven, Community Development Block Grant Program 2016-17 One-Year Action Plan. Our staff report this evening is by our principal planner, Armando Copian. Armando? Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, members of the City Council. <coughs> Each year, the City of Chino receives Community Development Block Grant funds, CDBG funds, as you commonly refer to, from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. This year, Chino re will receive an allocation of $466,402. On January 25th, 2016, the Community Services Commission heard presentations from public service applicants seeking CDBG funds for the 2016-17 program year. On February 2nd, the members of the Community Services Commission subcommittee met with city staff to review the applications, rank them, and prepare a preliminary funding recommendation list that was presented to the full, com full commission on February 22nd. At that meeting, the commission approved funding recommendations that have been incorporated into the city's draft one-year action plan for the program year 2016-17. The primary objective of the CDBG program is the development of viable urban communities by providing adequate housing, a suitable living environment, and expanding economic opportunities principally for persons of low and moderate income. The one-year action plan details the proposed uses of the fiscal year 2016 CDBG, alloc uh, CDBG allocation as it relates to the CDBG primary objectives. Additionally, $88,650.93 of prior year unprogrammed funds will be available as well as $8,090 of program income received and an estimated carryover from the current fiscal year 2015-16 budget in the amount of $186,391 for CIP and economic development programs and projects. Each program and project application was evaluated according to the following three criteria. Number one, it meets HUD's national objectives and eligibility requirements. Number two, it, it is consistent with the needs assessment. And three, it does not create any duplication of service. Exhibit one of the staff report outlines the programs and projects that the commission is recommending for funding, including the proposed level of funding. The commission recommends that $69,960 in projects be funded in the public services category, which is a 15% limit established by HUD. Staff is recommending $396,442 in projects be funded in the capital improvement slash economic development category. The public hearing being conducted tonight fulfills HUD citizen participation requirements for the adoption of the one-year action plan. A 30-day public review, per review period began on March 1st, 2016 and con concluded on April 1st, 2016. <coughs> that gave interested community members the opportunity to submit input in writing <coughs> on any concerns they may have regarding the one-year action plan. No comments were received. Following final adoption, the one-year action plan will be submitted to HUD for its review and approval. The Community Services Commission respectfully submits its funding recommendations to the City Council. These recommendations have been thoroughly evaluated according to HUD requirements. This concludes my report. I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Armando. Prior to Council questions or uh, comments, I'll open this with a public comment. Anybody wishing to address the council on this item may do so now. 
Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Any questions or comments? I would entertain a motion. It's moved by Councilman Duncan, seconded by Councilman Howey. Please vote. Item passes five yes in the majority. Next, another public hearing, uh, Prado Preserve Sewer Improvement Project. And this report is by our uh, Director of Community Development, Mr. Nicholas Ligore. Mr. Ligore. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Currently, all sewage that's generated in the preserve area is discharged into the Santa Ana Regional Interceptor, or SARI line. And this has been a temporary arrangement. Uh, temporary has so far lasted a decade, uh, but it's always uh, been intended as a temporary arrangement. The ultimate sewer design for the preserve area requires the construction of a sewer lift station at the southern end of Johnson Avenue, south of Pine Avenue, and adjacent to Prado Regional Park. The property where the lift station is proposed is controlled by the United States Army Corps of Engineers. One of the last steps in the process of constructing the ultimate sewer infrastructure in the preserve is the approval of an easement by the Army Corps for the location of this lift station. Staff is asking the council to adopt a mitigated negative declaration so that the project can meet compliance requirements with the California Environmental Quality Act. The Army Corps is nearly ready to adopt a finding of no significant impact in compliance with the National Environmental Protection Act. Once these actions are taken, the easement can be processed and construction can begin. The Planning Commission at their March 21st meeting reviewed the mitigated negative declaration and unanimously recommended its approval to the Council. All potential areas of environmental impact have been studied and mitigation measures are proposed that will reduce any impacts to a less than significant level. Staff recommends that the City Council conduct a public hearing and adopt resolution number 2016-036, adopting a mitigated negative declaration for the Prado Preserve Sewer Improvement Project. This concludes my report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Also, Mr. Leary is available to answering technical questions regarding the proposed infrastructure. Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, I'll open the public hearing. Anybody wish to address the Council on this item may do so now. Quiet on you. I'll close the public hearing. Any comment by council members? Entertain a uh, motion. It's moved by Councilman Duncan, second by Mayor Pro Tem Yaloa. Please vote. Item passes five yes in the majority. Under new business, sale of stored groundwater. Uh, report by Jose Allaire, Assistant City Manager and Public Works Director. Jose. Thank you, Mayor and members of the City Council. Each year, st uh, city staff, we evaluate our groundwater <coughs> reserves and determine if our reserves are sufficient to cover our water demand. In the case where the demand, um, our reserves are greater than our demand, then, then there exists an opportunity for us to sell or lease some of this water to other agencies and generate revenue for the city or our water fund. For the past several years, staff has determined our reserves indeed have exceeded our demand and we are able to sell a portion of them. Funds from these transactions will go towards infrastructure projects such as treatment facilities and improvements to those facilities, water pump replacements, and repairs to our existing water lines. This transaction before you tonight is for 10,000 acre feet of water from the city's groundwater account and would still leave us with over 65,000 acre feet in the city's stored groundwater account. Now the Fontana Water Company has agreed to buy this amount of water, the 10,000 acre feet, in the amount of $5,169,920. Sweet. If approved tonight, um, the Fontana Water Company Board still needs to approve this transaction and has scheduled it for later this week uh, for their hearing. Also, the Chino Basin Water Master will need to approve this transaction and the documents to transfer this water as well. Now, staff, we've uh, talked to both of these agencies. We don't anticipate any issues with the approval, but those two still need to occur. Uh, that concludes my report on this item, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Lair. Prior to comment by uh, council, I'll open this to the public comment. Anybody in the audience wish to address the council on this issue? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Any comments by council members? I'd entertain a motion. Mayor, Mayor I'd like to make a comment by name. Sure. Yes, Mayor, members of the council, members of the public, while everything that Jose Aleri has stated about the transaction is correct, we also need to remember 
that we would probably not enter into this transaction if it were not for the current agreement by some of the parties to take this water from Chino at no compensation at a total value of $45 million. And we are currently opposing that request in court. The motion has been continued several times by the judge. It's set for early June. And uh, it had been our plans to continue to save our water for the needs of the future residents of the city because at some point in time when the city builds out, we will not have enough groundwater to supply the city and we will need to be buying groundwater. So this, this uh, current sale, while it, it meets all the requirements of the city's rights to do so, it is not an action that we would normally be taken but for the action of the other parties that r literally want to steal this water from the city of Chino. Uh, whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting. Uh, any, any other comments, uh, Eunice? One good thing about selling this water for over $5 million is that it will help offset infrastructure costs. Oh, yeah moving forward. So the $5 million would normally be part of a capital improvement program of some sort. This is going to avoid us having to come up with, through our rates, uh, $5.1 million in the future. Yep. Very good. Anybody else? I'd entertain a motion. It's a motion by D Councilman Duncan, second by Councilman Howie. Please vote. Passes five yes in the majority. Item 10, authorization for the inclusion of certain information in an official statement relating to the issuance of the Chino Basin Desalter Authority Revenue Refunding Bond Series uh, 2016A. Uh, report by our finance uh, director, Rob Burns. Mr. Burns. Uh, good evening, Mayor and members of City Council. The City of Chino is currently a member agency for the Chino Basin Desalter Authority. <coughs> uh, the Chino Basin Desalter Authority currently has outstanding its 2008 Series A bonds. Uh, based on the low interest rate environment that we're currently in, it's very favorable to refinance these bonds at this time. The anticipated savings for the CDA is 680000 and Chino's share of this would be $173,000 per year. In order to proceed with refinancing, it's required that Chino adopt Resolution 2016-031, authorizing the inclusion of the city's water operations, both past and projected into the official statement. Uh, it should be noted that Appendix B included in the staff report has been changed slightly to reflect the latest information uh, uh, from CDA based on, uh, for their water costs and overall water purchase for resale costs. So with that, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Prior to council uh, questions, anybody in the audience wishing to uh, speak on this issue? Seeing none to close public comment, Eunice? Rob, I do have a question. Um, CDA 1 is getting old. CDA 2 is aging as well. When I was on the CDA board, um, I brought up several times the fact that we don't have any kind of replacement fund for the eventual upgrade of the CDA facilities or replacement or whatever. Have they made any progress in that area? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Um, I didn't know Mr. Howie, is, aren't you on the board yeah. uh, for the CDA? Yeah. So he yeah. might know better than I about that. Yeah. Um, I'm not actively involved in the, the governance of the CDA. but Yeah, as far as I know, we, I haven't seen any discussion as far as any uh, funds or uh, accounts that are setting up for replacement of those, but that's a good, I'll, I'll bring that to the board. Uh, yeah, I'm, re I'm really um, concerned about that. Uh, I was concerned about it when I was on the board, and okay. of course no one wants to ever pay any money, but eventually no. those yeah. facilities are going to have to be upgraded or replaced. Absolutely. And it's going to be millions and millions and millions of dollars, right. and um, I'd really like Maybe you could bring it up the next sure. board meeting. I'd really Absolutely. like to see them take some kind of proactive position. I'll do that before. I'll talk to Curtis. And Ms. Yola, um, Dave Crosley has some information available yeah. uh, about that subject if you'd like him to answer. I would yeah. appreciate it. Good evening, Dave Crosley. Um, the CDA does maintain certain reserve accounts to replace aging facilities. It does not... Uh, provide sufficient funds to entirely replace all of the building structures 
and some of the other major uh, permanent structures, but a lot of the equipment, um, th there are reserve funds in place for that. Yes, I recall that, um, to yeah. replace the pumps and things like that, the commonly failed items, but there is no current plan that I know of for facility for replacement yeah, or amortization, no. anything like that that I know of, and it really concerns me because those facilities are aging. You, you are correct. Thank you. Duncan? Yeah, uh, Dave, we should be, the, the proper way to do this is to fund depreciation on the structures. And that's a change we made at the Water Facilities Authority to make sure that we have uh, reserves in place. So uh, I, if they don't do it, the CDA should be doing that. And Rob, how long is the uh, refunding of these bonds? How, how long is the life of the bonds? And what was it already? What was the existing loan? Uh, the outstanding balance is approximately $80 million. It's a no, tad what, what's the duration the of maturity, the bonds? Yeah. Um, the maturity, I'm not sure exactly how many more years it matures. The refunding won't extend the maturity at all. Okay. Uh, the that refunding was, that is, was the, the question I had. Did, yeah, the it, refunding is always within the maturity date. Uh, yeah. It never extends. I mean, it's just uh, like your house. If you have 12 years left to pay on your house and you refinance it at 30, you really cut the payment down, but yeah. Uh, but if you extend the term, it's you're losing really money help. a lot of yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. Well, but I'm not understanding. If the term isn't being extended, I think it's another 15 or 17 years left on the repayment of that. And it wasn't extended. It was just you know I was very happy to vote to save a you know our city 173 thousand a year, and sure. uh, and probably in another five or six or seven years they'll probably refund them. You know they'll they'll come up with another way to save some more money because they've been doing it about every seven years. They've been refunding these bonds and saving money. So, but I, but I, yeah, it did yeah. not extend the uh, length of that uh, of that repayment. Okay. Okay. Is that yeah. it? You have that's anything it. else? Yeah, that's it. I'd entertain a motion. Moved by Councilman Duncan, second by Mayor Pro Tem Yaloa. Please vote. Item passes five. Yes. Next, item 11, approval of bond documents for special tax bonds for Community Facilities District number 2005-1 Improvement area number four. Again, Mr. Burns. Uh, good evening, council members. Uh, the city of Chino form CFD 2005-1 in 2007, which is located in College Park. In 2012, the city amended the CFD, which included forming improvement area four, located in phase two of College Park. Improvement area four is now ready and eligible to issue bonds. Tonight we're seeking approval of resolution 2016-035 authorizing the issuance of the special tax bonds of the district and approving the substantially final forms of the preliminary official statement and the property appraisal. Approval of these bond documents will allow the financing to move forward with final bond sales scheduled for the end of this month. That concludes my report and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Prior to council questions, uh, anybody in the audience wish to uh, speak on this issue? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Any uh, questions by council? Entertain a motion. It's moved by Councilman Duncan, second by Councilman Elrod. Please vote. <coughs> Item passes five yes. Okay. Now under mayor and council reports, under mayor's report, uh, first I wanna remind everybody that uh, May is National Bike Month. <coughs> And in the spirit of this fact, the city will be holding Chino Bike Day on Saturday, May 14th at Cal Aero Preserve Academy from 8 a.m. To, to noon. This event focuses on bicycle safety procedures while giving participants the chance to enjoy bicycle obstacle courses, activities, crafts, and refreshments. Uh, for more information, call 909-334-3478. And on the same day, we will be reopening the Old Schoolhouse Museum. Uh, located at 5493 B Street. Uh, the ceremony will begin at 10 a.m. with the museum opening to the public immediately following. Uh, please join us. This is a, a historic event for the city of Chino. If you can possibly make it there, it's, it's, it's turned out really nice. Also on Monday, May 16th, the city of Chino and Chino Youth Museum will hold the Spring Bingo Bash at the Chino Fairgrounds beginning at 5.30 p.m. Attendance uh, to this event is $25 at the door which will provide you with an evening of fun, great food, and outstanding prizes. Lastly, I'd like to give an early reminder the City Hall will be closed Monday, 
May 30th, in observance of Memorial Day. City Hall will reopen the following day at its regular hours. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Uloa. Thank you. Um, first, I'd like to thank Jose Leary and the Public Works Department, appropriate for today. <clears throat> I received a call from a gentleman associated with CIM. They were very, very concerned. Uh, CIM was in the state of California about a project. They had a sewer project, and it seems to have, there were some problems with it. They didn't know how to resolve the problems, and I guess there was quite a panic up at the Sacramento office. And so I, I received the call, and I called Jose and asked him to help out, and he resolved all the issues. So again, once again, you guys are always on the ball and always helping everybody, so thank you very much. Was it for their sewer plant there? It was some problem with the contractor and some kind of construction issue. I didn't get into the details. Because I've seen that sewer treatment plant. It's got to be the joke of the century. They normally just dig a hole. Oh, if you knew what I saw when I was out there, uh, well, hopefully, unbelievable, typical. Well, Hopefully they're getting their act together. But um, yeah, right. what I wanted to bring up tonight was, you know, thank you to the Public Works Department uh, under Jose's guidance, and you guys saved the day again. Yeah, our facility is. <laughs> uh, Let's see. On the 20th, um, many of us were able to attend the special meeting about districting within our city. Uh, there's going to be another meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, and I would really encourage the public to come and give your input on that. On the 22nd, I attended the Southern California Water Committee's quarterly meeting. Very, very interesting information uh, that was provided to us about the Delta fix. 27th, Dennis had his last State of the City address. The event turned out very nice, very well attended. Um, and we're going to miss you. But maybe you can come back and MC the, the future ones. <laughs> So. <laughs> We're going to miss your radio voice. Uh, on the 30th, I <clears throat> excuse me, attended the Corporate Challenge opening ceremonies, which was a lot of fun. They had the 5K run. The weather was a little bit cool, but it uh, dried up, and, and the rivalry there is incredible. In fact, we have two of our own council members who are going to participate in Corporate Challenge, and that's Councilman Duncan and Councilman Howie. So good luck to our fellow council members, and I hope you guys Tom win. Tom and I are going to bring the gold for bowling. Uh, all we got to do is uh, divert the police department and yeah. maybe give them the wrong, give Kendall the wrong directions <laughs> to the bowling alley. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, the rivalry. Yeah, he comes up and bowls a 280 <clears throat> in the corporate oh. challenge. <clears throat> well, the rivalry is incredible, but it's a lot yeah. of fun. Um, yeah. The important thing is that we beat Chino Hills, right? Exactly. Yes. Right. We take great pride in the racquetball court of beating Chino Hills. <laughs> and then, let's see, um, I mentioned the special meeting tomorrow, and then uh, Councilman Howie's going to talk about our Pioneer Picnic that's coming up, and that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Councilman Duncan. Yes. Uh, on the 27th, I didn't get to attend the State of the City Address because I was representing the city of Chino uh, and watching over our money with the Cal Trust Board of Directors. Uh, we continue to beat the state treasurer's pool by about 40 basis points, which is pretty significant in the, uh, when you've got uh, your reserves in there. Uh, and I uh, appreciate Eunice bringing up the corporate challenge. Uh, Tom and I will uh, be doing our best in the bowling. Tom, I know Tom's playing golf tomorrow. Yep. And uh, next sacrifice, Thursday sacrifice. on the 11th, I'll be carrying Jose O'Leary once again on the racquetball court. <laughs> carrying him, poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jose just keeps it going until I get a kill shot and we put it and take yeah, care he, of it. He made it in the 5K run and, incre and increased his time this year. I hope he didn't Good wear himself job. down too much. Yeah. He's got plenty of running to do on the racquetball court. <laughs> <Already>. <laughs> okay. So, but th this is really a great event. Uh, the city of Chino, city of Chino Hills, the school district, uh, some of the larger companies in town, field teams, and we get out there and play. And the, the key to everything is the sportsmanship and the camaraderie that is developed between uh, the different employees of the companies and the city employees. Uh, Police department has a team that's uh, always very competitive. The fire department is uh, 
usually our biggest challenge on the racquetball court. But it's just, you see the same people and uh, it builds relationships that is really positive for the city. And I know the companies that participate in it really enjoy it for the team building effort that it does with their employers. Uh, these companies mount their own web pages for their team. They have their t-shirts. We have our t-shirts for the city of Chino that we buy. So it's really a great event, and uh, I know Tom and I look forward to it every year. So that's the end of my report. Thank you, Councilman Elrod. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to say uh, tomorrow night's meeting, the time has changed from 5 to 7. So if people are planning to come, don't come at 5, because you're going to be here a little early. So, But I hope people do come at 7. I'll get a bigger turnout and some input. And it's all going to be here on time? That's questionable. Uh, yes. Matt? It better be. Yes. <laughs> yes. Matt's going to go pick him up. <laughs> that concludes my report, Mayor. Well, don't think for a minute that the council doesn't listen. Uh, the last couple of meetings we've had, we've had citizens come and request some minor uh, changes in the boundaries, and we've affected those. They have worked in, so we are listening to the public. And uh, uh, tomorrow night, if you have a, a, an issue with the drawn lines we've come up so far, it's still not too late to uh, change it. So. If you're interested, uh, be here tomorrow night at 7 p.m. <laughs> Councilman Howie. <clears throat> yes, yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a number of different items. Um, uh, last uh, Saturday, I attended the Plains of Fame um, air show at Chino Airport. And um, again, you know, a lot of people showed up, and it's just a great, it's just an unbelievable event that, to see all those old World War II uh, uh, air birds uh, flying. Uh, you know, you, you think some of those planes are from the 20s and the 30s. Uh, and then all those from the 1940s. And then, of course, the F-16 jet, uh, probably half the residents in town heard uh, that thing go up uh, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, I know I could hear it from my house, and I'm probably five miles away from the airport, and you could hear that uh, that F-16. But uh, I was they, getting calls on my cell phone. Were you? Yeah. <laughs> I think the lady said, well, in my yeah. house, I could see shoe size. Yeah. And they were boom. Boom. It was like a really noisy that thing. Man. That thing is so oh, loud. Oh, it's oh, just yeah, you, it when you're standing on the tarmac right there, and that thing goes by oh, you, yeah. it's just, you know, it's just, uh, it's amazing. Uh, so that the Plains of Fame had a great show. Again, it's always a, a wonderful event out at the airport. Uh, on that night, I went to the Community Center Corporation's fundraiser, the Murder Mystery Dinner at Los Serranos, and um, that, that was a, uh, an excellent evening also, attended by about 120 people. Uh, John Lynn from the theater uh, put on his, uh, his mystery uh, murder act, very funny, uh, and we had dinner, and, and it was a good fundraiser, and raised some money for, for the theater um, and for the, the Community Center Corporation. Then Rancho Del Chino had their bingo night last night, out at uh, at um, the fairgrounds, and we, it was a good. Also, raised some good money, and even though it wasn't highly attended, uh, everybody had. Uh, I thought I had a better chance of winning, but um, <laughs> unfortunately, our, the bingo cards weren't uh, you know that friendly, and so. Uh, um, but we, um, we people had fun, and they always have fun at the, at that event. Um, and then uh, the, and Eunice mentioned the Pioneer Picnic is coming up on May 15th. It starts at uh, around 11 o'clock. Um, and check the website for location and time and, and all that stuff. It's coming up. Uh, always a great event. It's going to be this at the year, community building, isn't it? It's at the community. I believe it's the community building, yeah. Um, right at 10th and B Street. And the funny thing is... Every year, we're never able to attend because we always go away to a conference. And this year, they moved the conference a week. So it looks like we could attend uh, the Pioneer Picnic this year, even though I'm not a pioneer. I feel like a pioneer sometimes. I've been in this town long enough. Um, <laughs> kind of look like one, too. I kind of look like I'm starting to look like a pioneer. <laughs> I wonder if I can wear a coonskin hat, hat or something, and maybe find some old uh, clothes uh, for that. Suspenders. Uh, suspenders. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And then... And then um, Last but not least, I'd like to wish everybody, happy, all the mothers, a happy Mother's Day coming up uh, this weekend. So uh, uh, happy day for that. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Um, city manager, anything to report? Yes, Mayor, the only thing I'd add is uh, on uh, May 12th, which is next uh, Thursday, we'll be having our budget workshop. The departments have been diligently so working excited. on their individual budgets, um, and so we'll be presenting that. This is exciting stuff, especially oh, for yeah. finance. Come on. So anyway, that's uh, again uh, May May twelfth. That's Thursday at four o'clock here in the council like chambers. Watching grass grow, so exciting. <laughs> I'll be driving back from uh, South Coast Plaza conference down there. Oh, you poor thing.
City Attorney, any comments, sir? Nothing further, Mayor. Uh, Chief Comstock, any? Chief Shackleford, anything to share? No report. Thank you, sir. With that, we'll stand adjourned. The next meeting of the City Council will be held tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, May 4th, at 7 p.m. Uh, in these council chambers. Are we, we stand... Are we adjourning in the name of memory of Prince? Yeah. Stand adjourned. Drive safely. <laughs> it's dark outside. I can't go home.